All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another glorious Rome 2 siege battle. And that's right, we're witnessing a massive infantry sally out. This is a 4v4, so sit back, relax, get some snacks and drinks, and enjoy the show. All right, so this is Aravachi uh, charging out. Uh, also, Swaby charging out with Club Levy. Yes, four units of Club Levy. We've got three units of Desert Levy. The Levy boys. No, make that five units of uh, Levy. Uh, Club Levy charging out. So, anyways, let's uh, really quick look at the factions here and try to figure out what the heck's going on. <laughs> uh, we've got, of course, we'll start with the defenders since we saw them first. Uh, Swaby, Nabatea. Uh, I'm going to slow it down just so we don't miss anything here. Uh, so, Swaby, Nabatea. We have um, Aravachi. I thought that was Aravachi charging out, but it wasn't. And then we have Pergamon, and that is it. Those are the four defenders. On the attacking side, look at this. Look at this placement here. Are these guerrilla troops? Uh, we've got the RDI. The RDI are present on the battlefield. These are attackers, guys. These these are attackers. It, it kind of confused me for a second because I was like, wait a second. They're already in the settlement. Are they defending? Like, oh, no, but they, they are the attacker. The rest of their army is located over here. And then on the other side of the battlefield, when we started the video, we've got Egypt and the Seleucids. Uh, so that is, I think, I think we have the Athenians as well. Yeah, each, that, I knew it. I was like, wait a second. This looks like more than one army. Look how similar their banners are. All right, they both have a bird. They're both blue and white. This one's like a little bit of a golden white. You know, like an, like an off-white, and this one's just white. Yeah, it's so confusing. So Athens, Egypt, Seleucids, and Aravachi are, are, I'm sorry, RDI are attacking. Now back over here, the uh, fight has begun where we have Hillman of the uh, Seleucids charging into the fight. And it's getting super laggy, guys. What the heck? All these units running around. It's getting crazy in here. Uh, we've got more Clev Levy. Oh, about to get charged by some cab that just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Uh, and then we have more Club Levy going into the fight as well. So look at this big, juicy infantry battle. Absolute slaughter. Mosh pit. People are being... Th thrown off shields so I don't know what the strategy here was for this uh, it was kind of like hey guys let's try to uh, get rid of all of our cheap troops really fast in this battle okay <laughs> that's what it seems like everybody's just throwing in their levy hillman club levy like a couple units of cap now we're starting to see a little bit more professional troops here uh thorax swordsman about to join the fray artillery's going for the expensive boys of course makes sense try to take them out from a distance rather than trying to kill them up close and personal thorax swordsmen are like the feudal knights of the ancient world uh they can definitely um they're the backbone of most armies in this game uh now we've got some cav units doing some hammer and anvil this is uh, athens sending over some city citizen cav uh, as they push forward and um you know do their thing which is die it looks like they're not gonna have enough here they're, well it's a good move by the uh swaby to kind of push away from the infantry fight try to get this cap the cap is just too fast and they are charging into this one wild wild and i do apologize about the stuttering guys it's just total war for you when there's when it's a 4v4 and there's so many units moving it does create some pretty intense lag so there you have it guys that is that is that of that sally out i don't know what they were trying to accomplish there and even the athenians are like no 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 you're not going back into the city not at this time and they charge in here if i zoom in it usually clears up a little bit there yeah, he's really trying to slow down this club levy, but hey, you know, it's smart of him to try to get this club levy back. In. They're like, open the gates, please, for the love of the great, powerful tree we worship. Open the gate. Yeah, so there they go. They are going to save this club levy. God bless them. While that was going on, big push here by the tortoises of Athens and Egypt, and they push together and trying to take out. Wow, this is a pretty quick, fast-moving siege. 
Already a battle in the streets. Nabatea sending in their Nabatea swordsmen against the light hoplites. Got some bumblebees there. Look at that. Look at that. He stings like a bee. Oh, he died. Stings like a bee. I assume that's why he put a bumblebee there. And then we got some Egypt, uh, Egyptian, excuse me, Egyptian infantry sitting in reserve. So they're already pushing pretty aggressively in the streets of this city. Oh, by the way, guys, by the way, uh, that intro really um, caught me off guard. I forgot to mention that this is a replay by Joe on it. He's actually commanding the Aravachi who are charging in as we speak. So uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. Uh, link to his channel down in the video description. Definitely check him out. Do appreciate Joe for the battle replay. Do enjoy his replays a lot. Uh, he's a very good player and he usually plays with very good players and it creates some, well, very good replays. Uh, here's a big push on the walls. We got Egypt taking on Aravachi's units of uh, infantry. Uh, and then we also have some more infantry moving up and some slingers moving up as well to kind of reinforce this front line. Now, over on this side, this is weird. This is just a weird fight. Uh, let me do normal speed here. And uh, can we turn the flags back on? There we go. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, this is a weird fight. They're pushing up these Illy... Illy, Illy uh, why can I never say this word? Ill... Sending up some raiders. Hold on. Give me a second. Ill Oh, man, I, I know how to say it. <laughs> but he's got some medium melee uh, r uh, raiders. And then over on this side, they're also fighting in this kind of like shallow creek river. More raiders uh, taking on the Galatian swords of Pergamon. Ill Illyrian? Why am I? Uh, dude, it sucks. Uh, someone will correct me in the comments, but I, 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 some days I get that word right, some days I don't. Over here, they're actually pushing really aggressively for the walls. Look at this. RDI pushing hard. You got some spears, throw spears. Uh, we got some noble hoplites. And they are pushing very aggressively, trying to take control of, I assume, the arrow towers. There's another stairway over here as well that's not even really be being defended pergamon is shifting their troops over to try to uh reinforce that defensive position they have a nice hill that they could hold right here and i wonder if they're just going to hold the top of the hill use the high ground this is such a cool map it's so cool that like the uh the walls aren't even properly put in here can they run through this what is that like what's gonna happen here i don't even know this map was never finished i suppose that's how awesome this map is uh, let's go back over to this side where, ooh, the Athenians. The Athenians and the Egyptians have been pushed back quite a bit uh, trying to take these uh, these streets. Now, they, I think they need to slow down. I think they need to slow down because they're just kind of throwing their armies piecemeal into the defenders. So they should probably group up a little bit, get some more reinforcements in here a little bit. You know, they've secured this area, so take advantage of it. You know, take advantage of it. And here's the Chad Wall. If you guys remember from one of the uh, previous battles, we saw this wall. The Chad Wall, it's, um, you know, at the most, like, what, a foot deep uh, or wide or whatever. Uh, and nope, that's that's going to stop. That's going to stop entire armies. But this wall right here that is, like, 20 feet wide. Oh, no big deal. Just a little little tortoise, a little ram head. Just knock it down. Boom. <laughs> Ah, uh, I love Rome 2 logic. All right, so more troops. Uh, they are gathering, but they need to get going. Like they need to, they need to just start funneling troops in and start grinding away. This is where the epic street grind will be can will continue will begin. I should say. Uh, we do have a little bit of a fight of thorax swords versus uh, this medium melee infantry, which I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce. It's heavy infantry armed with deadly. Uh, deadly swords are a handy unit for any general. Okay, there you go. Yes, yes. I'm so bad with words. I don't even know how I made it this far as a YouTuber. Seriously, like, the way I just speak and read. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, it looks like Pergamon is victorious over here, but RDI are falling back. That's because they're about to get, yeah, a spoonful of Hippias Lancers right into their face, man. Look at these guys. 
I mean, how? Okay, you gotta, you gotta feel like you're one of the most badass-looking soldiers on the battlefield this day. I mean, look at these guys, the red undergarment with the bronze goldish armor. You're riding on these magnificent beasts. Like, come on, come on, guys. Top unit, top soldier, style-wise and skill-wise. Uh, back over here, this is really the main push of RDI. I, I like RDI's aggressiveness there. I liked him using his guerrilla troops to kind of sneak into the settlement. It didn't really lead to much other than kind of distracting Pergamon. But this is the full-on attack right here of RDI. And this is going to be a big battle right here. Can RDI take on Pergamon alone? What is it going to come down to? You know, I really think... I think RDI is a good start here. They've gained a lot of control of this region. They could easily send up some archers and get some supporting fire. You know, get some uh, side fire with the archers. Man, this map is just... Uh, maybe it's the map that's causing all this lag. But look at it. Well, this might be why. Look at this. Oh, my units. Uh, but yeah, they're trying to push up onto these siege towers and get in position. Support the infantry who are fighting in the streets as we speak. Uh, let's go back over to the other side. Oh, Pergamon's shifting over more archers over to that side. So he's definitely trying to prepare more and more troops that way. Uh, we've got a little bit of infantry inside the uh, city here. we got some Thorax Swordsmen by uh, the Athenians. So Athens has sent up some uh, swordsmen there. And then we also have some Egyptians kind of watching this street. Oh, no, Athens is pushing up this way. Taking on the Nabataean swordsmen with this Thorax swordsman. So it looks like they got a little bit of infantry kind of plugging the gaps and pu pushing up inf or, uh, archers. They're pushing up archers, uh, which are technically infantry, you know. Uh, but yeah, they, they are getting into position and they are going to open fire and support this main attack. Uh, Swaby has some troops up here with the club levy. I'm not really quite sure what they're doing up there. I guess they have like Javi capability. Actually, it looks like they did this. Did they do this with their Javis? It's a possibility. That's the thing that makes uh, club levy so nasty. It's not that it's their armor. It's not their melee skill. It's the fact that there's so many of them and they all throw projectiles. It's nasty. They've taken control of this arrow tower. It is now supporting them in their assault. And they are setting up the infantry to start spraying down some arrows, I, support, uh, I suppose. So they're going to take a pretty passive attack here. Kind of relying on their ranged units really soften up this front line the only problem though is they don't want to use that too much on the infantry is this all club levy oh no these are blood sworn okay i was like did he just drop an all club levy and i'm just now noticing no he's got a lot of blood sworn so yeah got to be careful with these archers got to make sure i maybe they're running them in first just in case there's a sally out which there is a sally out over here we have aravachi who sent over some uh some calf Celt Celtiberian calf right tribal calf whose roots are in the Celtic martial tradition very cool but I guess they're from Iberia like their roots their ancestral roots are the Celts that's cool I don't know I think that's what that is uh but yeah they've rushed in their archers they're now rushing in the infantry they got to be careful not to blob them up a little bit uh, too much because that's going to make them an easy target. But let's go back over to the little island here surrounded by a river. Uh, this this is cool. This is so cool. Like, I wish there was more unique maps like this. You know, just really unique landscape. We've got rivers, uh, different sections you can fight at. You know, ah, oh, man. Like, if I could, if I had the resources, I would love to make a siege only, like, siege focus multiplayer game maybe do a, like a medieval one or even just like a rome one like an ancient one and just have all these crazy custom settlements maybe like have settlements where people can design uh even though it'd probably be broken because you'd just make it too easy to defend but you know just all that kind of stuff like unit customization uh oh imagine imagine total war where you can customize units uh with slight changes for example like uh, let's say if it was a medieval game and you were playing as the holy roman empire and the let's say there's like a base unit for imperial knights right 
but in, instead of giving them maces, you give them like two-handed swords or, or whatever. Or you slightly change their armor where their armor is a little heavier or maybe a little lighter so they're faster and they don't fatigue as easy. You know, that kind of stuff. That would be really awesome. You know, kind of like uh, Avatar Conquest, but much, much more. Much more. Where you can really change the fine details. Uh, that would be uh, pretty sick. Yeah, because like medieval armies, you know, because like Avatar Conquest, when you had all those like different uh, units and they're all different colors, that, that, that kind of works for medieval armies because medieval armies, you know, you had uh, all these different soldiers kind of representing their their area within the nation and you had these big beautiful banners and colors and sigils and ah uh, it would be cool to kind of like work on that you know build on that would be pretty sweet but at last i don't have the resources all right so back over this way aravachi is doing a great job aravachi is the only one of the defending armies that still hold uh, their wall and this I've seen this many times on this map This seems to always happen in this area where this area is really tough to capture uh, the the walls and it's super easy to watch your flank because of this one little choke point area right here It can just hold back oceans and oceans of troops so um, Yeah, I mean cuz look at this wall look at it you can't send but one siege tower up there maybe two right here but that's still nothing and if you attack the gate attacking the gate is suicide so this wall right here is pretty much pointless to attack uh it's just too difficult here we go we got we got uh, iberian spearmen going in for the charge trying to hold back these troops there we go reinforcing that choke point making sure he doesn't lose it very nice egypt sending up the thorax swordsman uh we got the club levy or blood sworn sh still holding it does look like there's a little bit of progress here from the athenians as they fight at this choke point uh but there's still a lot of reserves waiting waiting for them lots and lots of reserves all right let's go back over to here the fight is still continuing. We got uh, the Swaby Cav looking for an opportunity to potentially get a vulnerable target. But Seleucids have their artillery well defended. And that's the thing about this Cav is that defenders can pretty much wait all day with their Cav out here. I mean, Cav is very hard. It's Cav is hard to use effectively inside the city. So having them out here... And just kind of sitting out here and cause, causing a little bit of a mental thorn, I guess is what you could say. Like a little, like being a headache is a better word for it. Uh, just having this cab out and, and letting the defenders always have that in the back of their mind. It's a little bit of a mind game. But yeah, he's looking for an opportunity to get this Greek ballista. Uh, maybe he feels that the Seleucids are going to hold on to their ammo and open fire once they push him down to the last stand. We'll find out. We're still early on into this battle, and it's still tough to say he's going to win this one. Let's go back over to this side, and let's see how this one is unraveling. It's getting pretty wild here, guys. It looks like, honestly, at first glance, it looks pretty promising for Pergamon. Just looking at their armies, you can see the organization, the disorganized. You know, I feel like there's a little too much troops pushed up here. Pergamon's doing a good job of keeping his men fresh out of the fight, only really sending them in when they absolutely need to. Uh, so, yeah, Pergamon has got this on lockdown. He's got his archers in the back as well. Uh, these archers, what are they shooting at? Ah, they're shooting over this, like, temple-looking location. And, oh, my God, the accuracy you would need on that. I would also, that's the other thing I would do with archers is make them a little less accurate um, depending on the situation they're in like in this situation how uh, they had to I would have like a I would have like a line of sight uh, mechanic where if the archers cannot see the target that they're shooting at you know they're just kind of being told to shoot at an area you know the captain's like uh, the enemy reports are you know at this angle fire here you know I would make it very very inaccurate you know 
very inaccurate or inaccurate, in inaccurate, <laughs> uh, because they don't, they can't see what they're shooting at. Also, I like what Manor Lords is doing with their archers, where there's like two different firing modes. There's a rapid, fast firing mode, which I assume is going to have less damage because it's less power uh, and not as accurate. And then you have the longer, you know, volley fire mode, which is where the archers really pull back that bolt that uh you know bowstring as far as possible and they really take their time and aiming and you know maybe it's more accurate but of course the the negative to that is a slow fire rate uh, i love that kind of stuff that's the kind of small details i would love in a total war you know i i don't want uh you know i don't want to uh, speed i don't want these you know just convenience mechanics where it's like yeah the battles are five minutes like, yeah, I'd rather play one long epic battle than uh, 10 five minute battles, you know, but I get it. You know, the shorter battles kind of, they help the, the brain crack. You know what I mean? Like, cause it does suck when you play a long battle like this and you lose, you know, but if you lose in a short one, it's like, oh, whatever, we'll just play another one. And then you win and then you lose and then you win and kind of you know releases these uh you know the chemicals in your brain endorphins and stuff oh we won yay <laughs> you know you know how it goes anyways there's a whole science behind it uh but there's many times when i play these long siege battles even where i've lost but it comes down to the wire or there was something really epic i felt satisfied you know i was like wow that was crazy that was epic you know that was awesome uh, but yeah, look at this. We've got the uh, sword masters of Swaby pushing in, trying to counter push these spears of Athens. Or, yeah, Athens. So it's getting a little messy over here. Uh, the defenders are looking a little light, but the attackers are kind of looking a little light as well. They got a decent amount of uh, force of reserves. Where's the, uh, the cav? I guess they went back in. Let's, um,. I mean, there's really not much going on here. It's the continuation of these uh, the fights for the choke point. It's been a ferocious, bloody, uh, bloody grind. Both sides have lost units. Oh, this guy just died from friendly fire. That's a bummer. Oh yeah, get in there and fight him. There we go. More troops pushing in, trying to hold that choke point. Let's go back over to Pergamon and RDI. Looks like Pergamon. Yeah, it's no surprise here. It's close, though. It's close. It's not like Pergamon's going to be walking out of here with, uh, you know, a huge, strong army. They are severely, severely weakened. Uh, but they are going to come out on top. And this is uh, one less army they're going to have to worry about. Illyrian. Illyr That's it. Illyrian. Right? I'm probably still mispronounced. Illyrian. Yes. I figured it out, guys. Illyrian nobles. All right. Yes. Yes. It, it's come back to me. My power has returned. Illyrian. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what is this? What spears? No. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, okay. So, they've decided to fall back. That's actually not a bad idea. Kind of fall back. Hold this choke point. Um... The only problem, this arrow tower is yours for now, but they've got one unit here of these uh, Illyrian Theros Spears, Thero, Theros Spears, however you pronounce it, uh, holding holding back some spears, but they've got the archers they got to worry about. Now, these archers might be out of ammo, but they've got their bows out, so no, they definitely have some ammo. This is a really interesting, I don't know, I find this fight to be really interesting over here. You love to see like a few few elite troops kind of surrounded in a tough situation, but they have the advantage of terrain on their side. Let's see if uh, uh, the RDI. Mm, that's not good. I see. So the general is going to hold the main side, and then we have these noble hoplites who are going to run up and fight for this wall. I still think Pergamon's going to take this one, but. Uh, the great thing here is that RDI can cause some major damage and really cause Pergamon to bleed quite a lot before they can reunite with their allies and support them on their front. But uh, there's still a healthy few of troops from the uh, 
Athenians? It feels like the Athenians have like an like a never-ending well of troops, a pool of troops. Uh, of course, Egypt's in there. That kind of makes them look bigger. Seleucids are in the fight as well. It looks like most of the Seleucids, except for what do we got here? Royal Peltis. Nice. The balance of power is ever so slightly in favor of the attackers. We'll see if that can change. This is the critical moment, guys. We are entering uh, into late game of this battle, I would say. I would definitely say. So the great stand here of Nabataean swords against the Thorax ones. And look at this. There's a little bit of a gap here. This is this is pretty big. Uh, but, well, you know, Swaby's there to kind of protect. Swaby's kind of forming a very wide defensive formation. They are now pushing in Bloodsworn because they're going to have a little bit of a flank. You see that? Holy artillery. Oh, that's right. That's right. Isn't Nabatea considered like an African faction? I'm pretty sure the African kingdom factions can bring artillery, like m move mobile artillery as defenders. Uh, I think that's a pretty big deal. Uh, we'll see how this uh, this plays out in the defense. Man, that, I don't know. Just seeing that artillery there reminds me of Rome. Or uh, not Rome 2, of course. <laughs> the, the Rome 2. Uh, no, it reminds me of Medieval 2. Reminds me of Medieval 2, how you would set up the catapults. You know, you'd have way less troops holding off an ocean of enemies, and you're just using catapults to rip through their ranks. Ah, uh, that's good times. Good times, man. You know, I would say hopefully they'd make a uh, Medieval 2 remastered, but after the blunder of... Uh, of the Rome, the Rome remastered. I don't know. All right, so yeah, that artillery is gonna chew some units up. Let's see how many kills it has so far. That 42. All right, and 47 now after that little shot there. Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> oh my God, they're gonna they're gonna kill so many of them. Now at 55, and like every shot, it looks like they kill about five troops. That's huge, and it's causing some breakage here. But Aravachi is on its last leg, at least in this defense. They are sending up reinforcements. What do we got? Ooh, we got more medium melee infantry. Let's go. Yeah, I feel like, you know, on defense, bringing a lot of middle tier troops seems to be a really good play, you know? Just having a lot of troops rather than like super elite small amount of troops. It just causes the enemy to have to grind through so many more units. Alright, let's see how um, RDI is doing. Oh, they're dead. Oh, tragic. Oh, wait, no, they're still fighting. I thought this was them breaking. The general's still in it. And look at this. The royal hoplites. Dude, they're good. Oh my god. Oh, okay. I was like, in my head, I was like, did they just slaughter all those archers? But no, the archers are moving back. Because they realize, you know, there's really no need for the archers. Even if uh, Pergamon loses here, which I don't think they will. He's really, he's using these arrow towers the best he can uh, to really try to soften them up from a distance. I mean, units winning. The general is winning for um, RDI. This is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought these guys were breaking. My bad. Oh, okay, nice play. Nice play. Nice play. We have these spears moving up. They're down. They've lost almost 60 men. 55. Let's see if these nobles can uh, kill the general. Probably not likely. Nobles are probably pretty tired. No, they're fresh. Combat even. There's a chance. If the general can win here for um, RDI, break through here, get these archers, surround the general. Ah, what's this? Pergamon still has a trick up his sleeve. We've got the Hippias Lancers. Already has 131 kills. The Chad Lancers, they're moving in. 
All right, let's go back over to the center fight. Sway oh, this is good. This is good. Mm, juicy. Lots of gravy here, guys, as the units battle it out over their uh, dead comrades. <laughs> their dead brothers in arms. So let's see that, uh, that kill count. Oh, for that artillery. Royal Peltis are now charging in. Losing uh, seven there. Now losing nine troops there. Royal Peltis, that's a unit you don't want to die to an Onager. And that's why they're focusing them down. They are at 77 kills. Which on 83 now. Uh, it depends how much ammo they have. But if they still have a lot, I mean... Like, I think a single unit of swords could easily get 80-something kills, but there's also a fear factor to Onagers, you know, when they're using Flaming Shot. Uh, they cause uh, morale breakage, you know. And now we got archers both sides. Both sides! This is what I love, man. This is when I love the older Total Wars, when you've got the uh, infantry in this absolute horrific bloodbath ma mosh pit of death and, des and destruction. And... You know, meanwhile, there's hundreds. Look at that. Hundreds of arrows flying overhead. You've got fiery balls of justice flying overhead. You got units reforming to get a charge bonus off. Like, that's... This is... This is it. This is peak gaming right here. Oh! That's some friendly fire there, I think, as well. Oh! <laughs> and these, uh, these onagers, they are at... 156 kills. They've almost doubled since we last saw them. My God. They are really racking up some kills. And this is not this is not good. These are very good units. This onager is doing a great job of holding this center. And you know, you know, as this battle goes on, it's still even, guys. It's still anyone's game. But when I'm looking at what's left of the attackers, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. They've really got to win somewhere. And now we have uh, Pergamon. They're sending in their archers. They're helping out. Athens is breaking here. We got the General Swaby charging in. Uh, we've got some Royal Peltis on this side, which is going to be a big issue. Uh, I'm seeing if Athens has anything that's of, of good. Like, he's got Thorak Hoplites. Did they not bring any pikemen? No pikemen. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I don't know if that was a rule that the players were playing on. It's possible that players were like, hey, I don't really feel like dealing with pikes, so let's do a no pike rule because I didn't see any pikes in this battle. Uh, that could be a possibility, or the players just didn't want to bring them. Oh, that artillery is still going. That artillery is doing... Oh. Artillery porn. This is what this is. They're at 228 kills. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of kills. That's a lot of kills. Well, they got to pray that this thing runs out of ammo. But even if it does or even if it already has, there's fresh Nabataean infantry. 160 men. More like 320 men. As two units of fresh 160 uh, units push up. Uh, the general now for um, Athens has, has gone in. We've got Cav, Citizen Cav, moving up. But they uh, they really got a uh, tough, tough situation to fight through. Now, this is a good little move right here. We've got some spears who captured the arrow towers. That's going to help, help put some flank and fire. It's not going to do a ton but it's something. Uh, the attackers are doing everything in their power to try to uh, to win this one. Use whatever advantage they can get. Oh, is that a gap in the lines? It is, and my god, these guys got hit as they were running forward by this. This thing still has ammo. That's got to be so frustrating. 280 kills. This bad boy is almost at 300 kills. That's going to be frustrating. And, and, you know, at this point, it's not even worth trying to get this Onager because I'm sure they're almost out of ammo. Oh, my God. The Seleucid General. He just had a, he had a tough time against that Onager. That, that Onager hit him on the run. And, unfortunately, 
The Seleucids have lost their general. That probably means their army, what's left of it, is not going to be too far behind. Oh my god, dude. It's brutal. All these arrows and uh, arrow towers. It's insane. Insane. Hmm. It's going to be a close one, guys. It's going to be a close one, but I feel like the defenders have the edge here just by looking at what they have left. They need to send more over here. And I know why they stopped because the the artillery. Oh, and it's hitting the uh, Athenian general right now. Oh, these poor hoplites, dude. Make it stop. I think it's I think it's player controlled now. It's firing very quickly. They have they're 5 kills away from 300. Let's also not forget the fear that it caused. It's killed 300, but or just shy of 300, but I'm sure they broke a lot more men than they've killed just by the fear. Oh, jeez. Fear of those fiery balls of justice. And look at that. Nabatea holds his flank. There's some friendly fire, though. But that is war. It's a sacrifice they are willing to make. Now, ooh, these axe warriors might flank around. Yeah, they're putting a big flank there. We need units back up there. This is your general fighting up there. Run, men, like it matters. Like it matters. That's why doing cardio is so important if you're an ancient warrior. Lots of running. Running in armor. There we go. More troops pushing up, pushing in. Got the Egyptian general on the walls for some reason. Th this is all that's left of Nab Nabatea's infantry. He's got some over here too, but... There's plenty of infantry left of Aravachi. And they are breaking... The Egyptian slash Athenian force... And we are down to our final minutes. And I think it's quite clear at this point that this is going to be a solid defensive victory. A close battle. If the attackers had like two more units, maybe they could have gotten this done. But I just don't see it happening. If they had two more units, just two. Nice little, uh, nice little hit on the general. I can't believe this thing still has ammo. And it's at 324 kills. This has been, this is the MVP unit of the day right here. Uh, this unit single-handedly, not single-handedly, of course, but, uh, it carried the defending teams to victory. Uh, let's remember 324 kills. That's a ton, but they probably broke more units than killed. Or broke more men, I should say. Hey, that Athenian general is still fighting it out, though. More power to him after getting hit over and over and over by Onager. Taking on infantry after infantry. They still fight it out. We're down to the last minute of the replay. The balance of power, balance of power is in favor of the defenders. But, guys, I don't think the attackers are going to win it. Yep, they're on their last leg. And there we go. Big break right there. I think at this moment, we're going to see a chain route. All that's really left are archers. There's some Thorax swords over here. But I think once the Athenian general dies, which he could have... He could have died already. His unit's just fighting on. And now we got... Oh, yeah. We got Cav roaming around. This attack has puttered out. Uh, they do not have enough units. They do not have enough fuel to get through this fight. And uh, that's going to be it. A close battle. A close battle. Uh, I wouldn't say it was extremely close, but it was certainly close to where the defenders were on their last leg as well. Got some leftover troops here. Uh, RDI, unfortunately, 
very close, but it was a 50-50 kind of thing. But Pergamon uh, barely inched their way forward to a uh, victory on that side. Uh, what a great fight, though. Uh, lots of juicy artillery. Great artillery placement. Uh, the attackers didn't really have an answer for that artillery, and because of it, I think the artillery was, honestly, if they didn't have that artillery, the attackers won, you know? If they had just a normal sword unit instead of that artillery, the attackers win. I, I Seriously, I think it could have been that big of a difference. Let's end the replay and look at the results here. So again, big shout out to Joe for sending in the replay. He's got his channel linked down in the video description. He does a lot of Rome 2 as well. Uh, so he got 1,398. He did a very good job of holding that far flank. Uh, that it would be his left flank. Very nice job. Uh, and then, yes, look at this. 2,800 or 2,085. I'm pretty sure this is this unit. Yep, this unit got the most kills of his entire army. We got Sea Dog over here. Woo, Pergamon. Holy crap. Did a great job. Almost 3,000 kills. But a GG, uh, Gorm also is a YouTuber, by the way. Shout out to him. I'll put a link to his channel as well. So definitely check them out. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching. This was a lot of fun. Some juicy artillery. You know, a day is never wasted when you get to see juicy artillery. That's for sure. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys had a good little break, whatever you were getting a break from while watching this video. And I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield.